Hello everyone, today we're going to learn everything we need to know about Illumilite Clear Slow. I'll have links to Illumilite below with Jake Tennant checkout as a code. Uh, I do a live show every Saturday morning at 10 o'clock a.m. Central Time. Come and see us. If you watch this video and you get something out of it, at the end of it, give me a thumbs up, leave me a comment, uh, share the video with your friends that need to know stuff about Illumilite Clear Slow. Now let's start learning. Slow. I've used it for years and there are advantages and some disadvantages. The advantages are you can cast things like this with one cast and have it out of the pressure pot in the same day. Now with that being said, one more example is a quarantine green bowl that's fitting for these times. One cast, this is over 2,000 grams I believe. This is one cast. I had it out of the pressure pot the same day. Now speaking of pressure pots, <laughs> you have to have a pressure pot so there's no um, negotiation there's no uh, begging or pleading is you have to use the pressure pot and we're going to prove that too these here say everything you need to know is pretty much here on these labels and it's uh, 12 minutes of working time you demold in two to four hours and you have to use a pressure pot <laughs> it's pretty easy uh as you can see, I've already marked. These are brand new, and I'll prove it. Now it's going to be a theme of today. I'm going to prove everything I say. This is, it's got a cap on it. These are not open. I've had several people call me and say, hey, man, my, my jugs aren't the same level. Well, this isn't by volume, it's by weight, and I'm going to prove it right now. We're going to weigh this in grams. These are eight pounds a piece. We're wearing them in grams, so see how close they are to one another. Part B is 37.68. Part A is 37.86. So it's within 20 grams. So these are eight pounds a piece and they become within 20 grams of each other. So that just proves that this needs to go by weight, not by volume. The first thing we're gonna prove that we need to watch out for is air and i'm going to do that right here on a, a past piece and i think we can all agree with um any kind of resin or epoxy we need to have air it doesn't like air to look like foam or whatever it's going to try to come out here's my the biggest failure i've ever done and let's look at it this right here is a wolverine project it's it's on my channel but it it turned out fantastic in the end but the lesson i had to learn was he had air inside of him you can see the big thing came out. I left him in the pressure pot for, you know, three hours or so. As soon as I opened it, I could see the air come out. So his body was was hollow, but I didn't know it. So the the lesson is, this is a exaggerated example of it, but it's it rings true with smaller amounts too. So if you're trying to do a cast and you have air in your the thing that you're trying to cast, it's not going to turn out pretty. So. So I think the air thing is, is already proved and we'll move on. The next thing is going to be moisture. I had a football project. I put a, um, a terrible towel inside of a football. I forgot to, to heat the moisture out of that piece of wood and it became horrible. And I'm hoping to recreate that today. I have two pieces of stabilized maple burl. I cut pockets with the CNC machine. The only difference is this one I put in the oven, this one, they've both been stabilized, which means you take out the air and you replace it with a stabilizing resin. That's a whole nother ball of wax. But with these have been sitting out and they have surface moisture out. That's the same thing that happened to that project. So what I'm going to do is this one just came out of the oven. It's kind of hot, about 150, 160 degrees for about a half hour. So all of the surface moisture should be out of this one, and this one should have surface moisture in it. And we're going to fill these up, put them in the pressure pot, and a few hours later we're going to see one should be milky and one should be crystal clear. So hopefully that's the case. Before we start anything, we always think about safety. you got safety glasses and our gloves. <laughs> so what we're going to do is I'm going to do two things at once here. These... I'm going to prove the moisture thing and I'm going to purposefully make too much in order to, I'm going to have one cup go in the pressure pot just with clear resin in it and I'm going to have one stay out here with clear resin in it and then at the end of this thing we'll show the difference between the two. Should be alright. So I'm just going to measure some out. 
I'll go ahead and show mixing on one of these. Uh, this is this is a more advanced class. You should be able to to be mixed. Just mix it until you think you're done, and then keep mixing. I always use uh, silicone spatulas so that they get you know you can see it go up against the side, and you can get the bottoms with it and everything. I always use silicone. Make sure you mix it well. That's, that's a common mistake a lot of people make with all types of resins or epoxies. Go ahead and mix well. I'm going to make, I don't know, 400 grams of this, 200 and 200, and then that'll, that should be enough to uh, do both of these little projects here. There we go. 200.1. We'll go ahead and tear that. And I don't think a few tenths of a gram is going to kill us on this. If I was doing a much less amount, then then I'd probably be worried about it. But I'm going to go ahead and mix this up. And I'm just going to leave it in here. I'm going to mix it up for three or four minutes. Let the timer going. And here we are. We'll just mix it up. I probably should have used the bigger container, but here we are anyway. We'll get it done. This has 12 minutes of working time, but as soon as we think it's mixed up, we have three or four minutes, we can go ahead and do this. We don't have to wait the whole 12 minutes. I'll come back when this is about ready to pour, and we'll go ahead and do that. So as you can see here, I've been stirring for three minutes and 38 seconds now. I think it's fine, and you can kind of tell by how clear it is, but now it's, it's crystal clear right now, so it's ready to go. I'm gonna go ahead and put a little bit in each one of these. This one with the live edge is the one I had in the uh, oven. So I'm expecting this to be crystal clear and I'm expecting this one to be uh, milky because it has that surface moisture in it. That's probably good enough. I probably won't put any more in there. So what I'm gonna do is get this other cup. <laughs> Split this up somewhere even. This one will be left out. And this one will go in the pressure pot with, with those ones. I'll go ahead and get these in the pressure pot. I have an overhead view. Let's try that out. I'm going to put this one in the middle. And get the lid on it. A couple hours we'll pull that out and we'll prove our points. It's two hours later and we're going to go ahead and take this stuff out of the pressure pot and see how we did. This is the moisture test here, and I thought it would be more pronounced than that, but but you can really see see the white that down there that seems kind of milky or whatever, and this is crystal clear. So that one is proven, and we'll take a closer look at this in a second. Can we see that? This one is perfect. The one with the that I put in the in the oven to get rid of the surface moisture. This one has uh, moisture coming out of it, so that one's proved. <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and get these out of the cups, and you'll be able to see pressure pot, no pressure pot. All right, I have these out of the cups, and you can probably see it from there. But I'm gonna give you a closer view. That is crystal clear. This one is crystal, crystal clear. And this one has millions of bubbles in it. And also, without even trying, we made another point. This thing is... This is two inches. Two inches deep. Two inch deep pour. And it's... It's ready to work with right now. <laughs> that that is is the deal. It, the pressure pot is absolutely necessary for aluminum light clear flow. The next thing I'm going to prove is temperature makes a difference on color swirl. I actually have a video out on this on YouTube, but we're going to do it here. And hopefully it'll show up well. I'm going to use one of these pin molds. I'm going to use the big one in the middle. And one of them is going to be cold. As soon as I get the colors mixed, one it's going to be a bunch of clear and a little bit of a color. And I'm going to swirl it 
put in the pressure pot and I'm going to do the same thing with another mold and it's going to be with the same colors and everything but this one's going to be at a different temperature when I get the resin mixed and to the right temperature we're going to go this is about 800 grams I'm going to it's going to be mostly clear and I put some blue mica powder in another cup and I spilled stuff everywhere too so we're just going to get past that <laughs> And the temperature in the room right now is 68. This is 77 already. This is a beautiful blue. We're almost three minutes in. And it should be pretty well, pretty well mixed up. See how clear that resin is? 79 degrees. We're going to go ahead and pour it real quick and then get it in the pressure pot and then we'll do one with a higher temperature and then we'll be able to see what the difference is and i'm confident that that's mixed up good so i'm gonna go ahead and pour it in this one we want to normally i wouldn't use this much but we are trying to teach and learn here so let's go ahead and i have a fill line on these molds gives us a quarter inch to mess around with and a little bit extra so I'll do one of these other ones so here's the blue I'm gonna go ahead and give this a swirl like most people would with pen blanks or if you're trying to get a swirl out of this the big mistake is people do this too soon so this is pretty mixed up pretty well so I'm gonna go ahead of course this is dark <laughs> so I'm gonna go ahead and do this And I'm going to give it a, a little bit of a, go ahead and do this little one too. It should be pretty cool. And we're only four and a half minutes in, but I'm going to go ahead and swirl it like we would. I'm going to get it in the pressure pot. I filled it up. I filled it up pretty good. That's in the pressure pot and we're going to do it again. I'm going to come back when I have the next set already uh, ready to pour it up to temperature. Yeah, we're right around 90 degrees and I'm going to show you me uh, mixing this stuff and we'll get to pour it here in a second. 95 is where I tell beginners to pour it at because they're going to be a little bit slower getting in their pressure pot and maybe a little bit more clumsy or whatever but um we're going to go to about 105 and then pour this and then i'll get into the pressure pot and we should be all right make sure we're that's at 92. that's at 93. now what you got to understand is this is going to get hotter than this faster so uh, i waited till it was about 90 degrees before i started mixing the color or i put it in a smaller container so that we would be close at the end if i would have separated these at the beginning this would probably only be about 85 or so degrees when this is at 95 so just keep that in mind it's it's getting hot now so it's already it's 99 degrees and we're at 10 minutes <laughs> so the bigger pour that you have the uh, faster it's going to get hot so that 12 minutes just keep in mind that's just a uh, that's a guideline that's just to keep you from going way too far 102 i'm gonna wait i'm gonna do one more stir and then go okay 105 so here we go this should be a pretty good shot of this I'm going to do just like we did the other one. And I'm going to give it a little swirl just like the other one. And get it in the pressure pot. 
Pressure pot time. Here we go. I both those are in the pressure pot. We'll wait about two hours. I'll come back out here, and I'll, it should be a pretty good result on that. And it'll it'll prove that temperature does make a huge huge difference on swirling. A couple hours later, let's get them out of the pressure pots. Let's get these demolded. This one right here is the one that was done cold. And this one was the one that was done at 105 degrees. This is a huge difference. <laughs> okay, let's see the difference here. This one is cold and it has blended in. So if you would have just imagine when you want to do two or three different colors and it it's going to blend together like yellow and blue make green. This is kind of uh, clear and this blue blended together. Now this will be very clear on this one. There's absolutely no blending. This is all separation right here. Super awesome. Look at that. So I don't know how I could prove that any more than that. I'm super happy with how that happened. Total difference. If you notice, I kept the gloves on while I was demolding. If you demold it before, you know, it's demolded and it's not cured yet, if you touch it and touch your eyes, it can irritate your eyes. So keep your uh, PPE on. Speaking of that, I'm done messing with this stuff. Hopefully, I've taken a little bit of intimidation away from Illumilite Clear Slow. Uh, maybe uh, showed you a few things that's going to help your cast be more consistently successful and uh, clear and, and uh, more enjoyable to do. Uh, I, I love this stuff. Uh, lots of uh, lots of cool things coming up on my channel. So you guys come over and visit me. We have a lot of fun over there. So um, once again, thank you. Hopefully I helped you guys. And uh, we'll see y'all next time and y'all be good.